in his 21st year, and Case Western Reserve is coming off a 7-3 record last year and fourth place finish in the PAC. What steps does the team need to take to get back to the top of the conference to win the league and receive the automatic bid to the NCAA postseason? Well, I, it could be a lot of things. You know, you look at our, our season last year, and it was you know three games uh, that were great games, and we came up uh, a little short on. So, what do you need to win those games that you need to win? Um, it could be just physical maturity, just guys getting bigger and stronger, faster. You know, through off-season conditioning. Um, could be emotional maturity, you know, guys reacting differently when things don't go well. And this is a great league and it's not going to always go your way. And how quickly you bounce back could be the difference between winning and losing. Um, or just, just the mental part of the game, knowing what to do in each situation. We have a lot of guys coming back, um, but we have to get better in, in all three of those areas. If we stay the same, I think the results will be the same. This league is not going to come back to us we have to step up our game. And, and you know, we aspire to win championships. So um, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what a veteran group was willing to do in the off season to prepare for their, many of them their final year playing football. After experiencing the new PAC schedule format for the first time last year, what have you learned to help keep the team focused week in and week out throughout the year in a situation where one loss can cost you a chance at a PAC championship? <clears throat> yeah, I, I guess what we learned is like we can't look past anybody. You know, I was really, the, the biggest worry for me was going against Teal, opening game, because I didn't feel my guys thought that Teal was going to be a challenge. And we, everybody was looking past and looking to Grove City. And Teal gave us everything we could handle. So you got to be ready to play every single game. And I, I think we did learn from that experience. And again, I, I think our team and our coaching staff has great respect for everybody in this league. It, again, it is an upward trajectory and just not at the top. You know, people from all over, are, are they're working their programs. And the, the PAC is rising. And from, from the bottom to the top. You're slated to return most of the starters from a defense that was among the best in Division Three in points and yards allowed last season. How do you plan on maintaining that form for the upcoming season? Well, I, if we maintain, we're not going to move forward. So we got to get better. And, you know, how do we do that? I, I, hats off to our players and coaches. Last year against Teal, we lost two of our top three defenders. Uh, in the Teal game, our, both our outs, starting outside backers. And boy, it, after that game, it, it, it did not look great for what we could accomplish on defense. And, you know, we ended up top 15 in scoring yards, just a, a tremendous effort by our players and coaches. Um, one thing that stands out when I, I compare our defense from last year and the other top defenses in uh, the conference is uh, forcing turnovers. Um, we just weren't up there. I think we were seventh or eighth enforcing turnovers and that was up from last the previous two years so for a defense as good as I think that we can be we, we need to, to force more turnovers to again get over the hump and, and and win those big games against the best teams flipping the other side of the football the Spartans are also returning most of their offensive starters from a unit that ranked second the PAC in yards per game how do you foresee that experience impacting the upcoming season well, yeah, we do have experience, and I think we have guys actually that were that are going to be better. You know, Noah I think can be better. Noah is one of the most explosive players in the country, and I think he's just starting to peak as a football player. He's a one-year football player in high school. He's a basketball track athlete. So I think Noah is coming into his senior year as a complete receiver, and we plan on using him all over the field, inside, outside. You name it. He's, he's going to be moving around because now I, I think that he, he understands he can play in all those positions and execute very well. Ethan Dallum is coming back. Uh, he tore his ACL in 2022, 2023. Played great, but certainly wasn't 100% physically. Ethan's an outstanding athlete. And it, I've coached a lot of good quarterbacks in my time here. Drew, Drew uh, Saxton, our quarterback coach, being one of them, four-year starter four-year first-team All-PAC. Our top quarterback efficiency is Alex Fromberg, our returning starter. So we have some weapons. Um, we have to get better. We need to play more consistent. Um, we play very good against some of the top defenses and then not so great and maybe some against some not so top defenses. So I think focus and, and consistency are, are what we're going to strive for. I, I believe we have the talent, uh, but it's if we need to be focused and be more consistent. Thank you, Coach. Now a couple questions for Noah.
after two good seasons to start your career, you earned all region honors last season with 44 receptions, 1,001 yards, and 11 touchdowns. What led you to emerge as one of Division III's top receivers in 2023? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like cliche, but you're not going to go anywhere without your O-line, your quarterback. I mean, the receiver's the last guy to touch the ball. Everyone knows that. Uh, so I think, you know, our offense, all the other 10 guys on the field are a huge part of, you know, what I was able to do last season. Um, and you, you know, you're just not going to be able to perform without every other guy in the field doing their job. Um, and I think another thing was, you know, Coach Deb's confidence in me. I mean, he can speak to it, I'm sure. My freshman fall camp was not one of the best fall camps that, you know, Coach has ever seen. Um, but, you know, he threw me in a bunch of JV games, threw me into, you know, starting a bunch of games, uh, you know, even my freshman year. Um, so I think these last three years uh, I've kind of developed a lot of confidence. And that's, you know, largely thanks to Coach Debs, um, who's kind of, you know, even when I've you know, screwed up, made mistakes, um, he's kind of kept me in the game, uh, you know, kept my head up, he's kept my head level. Um, he's allowed me to kind of, you know, perform at the high level that I do. Following the numbers that you put up last season, how do you follow up a season like that and what goals have you set for yourself for your senior year? Yeah, I think personal goals are tough, uh, you know, just because you, everything kind of, you know, banks off of going 1-0 and every week. Um, you know, if I'm sitting on the sideline and we're 32 personnel and we're running down the field and we go 1-0 and every week, you will hear no complaints from me. I'll be, you know, happy to sit on the sideline. But, you know, I think personally, I'm just trying to get better every single week. If I'm going 1% every day, uh, you know, like everyone says, I'm totally okay with that. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's just getting that win. Um, yeah. You're in on 32 personnel this year. <laughs> I can do that. You're, you're 220 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've emerged as a potential prospect for the 2025 NFL Draft. How does that make you feel, and does it change your preparation for the upcoming college season at all? Yeah, I mean, it's it's super exciting. I, I think, you know, getting invited to a, you know, a rising senior, uh, you know, kind of combine, being able to, you know, run a 40, get measurements in front of several NFL scouts is a surreal experience. I mean, getting reached out to by agents is something that, you know, obviously Coach Deb said earlier, I played one year of full high school football, um, and I was pretty set on not playing college football at all until late February. So um, kind of being in this position is, is, you know, a blessing. You know, I was blessed with, you know, the intangibles, and God blessed me with, you know, the body that I'm able to use, and it's my duty to kind of, you know, use that and, you know, perform with the, the highest capability I can. Thank you, Noah, and thank you again, Coach Devil Jack. The new season kicks off the Spartans on September 7th with a road game at Waynesburg University. Case Western Reserve University head coach, Greg Devil Jack, and senior wide receiver, Noah Kelly.